Oh yes. Right, as you can hopefully see, um, we've got the mora in a little tabletop vise, a bit of um, the rubber grippy mesh to grip, and we're going to see if I can put a lanyard hole in the handle. Because it's not a full tang, so we should be okay if we keep near enough to the book. Now I think what I'm going to do, that's actually bending quite a bit. Um, so I'm going to put the handle in the vise and that way it shouldn't flex quite so much. Not made much of a hole. Find my little divot. Right, we're through. We'll stop you there. I'll swap drills. Right, so we've gone two, three, four, and five mil. Last one, six mil. Should do it. Ooh, wobbling. That's not right. I'll just tidy that up. Jobs are good. Right, one lanyard hole pretty much completed. See if we can tidy it up a bit, but the rubberized surface goes a bit raggedy, so that might stay scruffy. One thing that won't stay scruffy is the um, patina on the blade. I want my shiny back. It does smell nice that doesn't it? WD-40. So there's the patina. That's got to go. This is uh, a piece of 1000 grit that I just happened to have stuck to my cardboard already. So I'm going to start off with that and see what happens. I don't want to go any coarser than I need to because all I want to do is take the patina off. I don't want to scratch the blade up any more than necessary because then I'll just have to polish it out again. So you can see it's making an impression. 
that might do actually. I just think it might take a bit of time. Yeah, I think we'll be all right with the thousand. Right, so the thousand grip wasn't getting the pattern off as quickly as I hoped. So I went down to 800, then back to 1000. On the back edge, the dimpling was so deep that I had to use 180 grit paper. And unfortunately, I also had to give up before I got rid of all the dimpling because it was hurting my dodgy shoulder. So that I need to come back and do that, finish that off at a later date. I've now gone from a thousand up to three thousand because I haven't got anything in between. I thought I had some fifteen hundred or thereabouts, and I thought I had some two thousand. But as it turns out, I haven't. So this is where we're up to now. This is not going to be a proper high quality hand rubbed polish by any means. I think experience has shown that I haven't got the patience and given that this is a 12 quid utility knife, much as I think it's one of the best budget flick, fixed blades you're going to get. I don't think it merits hours and hours of hand polishing. So if you bear in mind that with this being the carbon steel version, it's quite dull when it arrives with the factory finish. So this is already, even though you can see all the scratches and the grind marks, it's already a lot shinier than the way it is when it's shipped. And also what's becoming obvious is the flats aren't exactly flat. They're very slightly concave. So we're getting a nice polish at the edges but in the centre it's slightly deeper so the paper isn't getting in obviously the cure for that is to take the paper off the desk and carry on with a proper hand polish getting into that depression but I, like I said I can't be bothered I think this is more than shiny enough So I'll just give the bevel a quick tickle. Wipe the slurry off. That's more than shiny enough for me. What we need to do though is just make sure that None of this malarkey has spoiled the edge. That looks fine to me. Look at all the paper straight. Lovely. So last job is to get a lanyard on it and then we'll see what it looks like when it's finished. Okay so there we have it. Um, a very simple thumb lanyard fitted like that. The experimental patina removed and the edge maintained. Give us, giving us a knife that some people may 
once upon a time have described as up for it. Thanks for watching.